Well hello from a very rocky P&O Ventura as we just finished coming through the Bay of Biscay at the end of a week's cruise. Just thought I'd give you a little bit of a lowdown on the ship and my thoughts on this much loved British cruise ship. So the last time I was on the ship was back in 2017, so six years ago. So in that time she has been in and had a little bit of a refit and to be fair the condition of the ship is really good. I mean I've read some reports online, some people saying oh, she's a bit tired, a bit of a rust bucket, all that kind of thing. But to be honest with you, I think she's been looked after immaculately. I don't know if that's because of the dry dock but she looks great to me. Can't see worn carpets, can't see much rust or anything like that. Okay she's not the newest ship, she's 15 years old but I think she looks fantastic. Okay, so in terms of facilities, she perhaps doesn't have the dining facilities and some of the entertainment options that some of the larger ships have, but that's to be expected, and to be honest, that is reflected in the price. So once we first got to Southampton and we got on the ship, it was fine. We had a late boarding time of 2.30, and that's about the time that we got onto the ship. As soon as we got on the ship, the cabin was already ready, so all we had to do was dump our bags, go to our muster station, get our cards, bleeped, and then that was it. We were off and, off and running on the cruise. So first off let's talk about the food. Now we've eaten mainly in the main dining room and pretty much the same story as most crews I've been on lately. Portions are getting a little bit smaller, the waiters are getting more and more rushed running around trying to serve everybody. So it's a little bit annoying that because time was they used to have a waiter, an assistant waiter, a sommelier, they used to have a dining room manager who'd come around. Now it's just the one person and they're having to look after so many tables. Uh, first night I asked if they could send the wine waiter over and the guy smiled at me and said I am the wine waiter and he was already literally running between tables. Uh, lovely guy working so hard but I do think that they're just pushing him a little bit too much now. It made for a rush service, you're there trying to eat and it's a bit unnerving when the guy's literally running around with bits of bread roll and all that kind of thing. Um, the food itself, portions were a bit smaller uh, but they, they seem to be forever getting smaller. Quality was okay, ingredients were so-so. Um, I mean it's a main dining room experience, they're really trying to push you towards speciality now but yeah it was okay, there was enough. I'm not the biggest eater in the world so it was fine for me. Um, I think if you really if you liked your food a bit more you'd probably be better off maybe going into one of the specialities or maybe you end up in the buffet before as a, a pre-dinner or a post-dinner little snack. So in terms of speciality dining on this ship you've got a Sindhu which is at East and you've also got Epicurean, you've also got the Beach House which is where they basically turn the buffet into a, into a speciality dining area where you can get sort of upgraded burgers and all that kind of thing. Um, there's not so many options, I mean if you're going on one of the P&O's newer ships like Iona or Arvia then there's loads of speciality restaurants, not so much on this one and then also by the pool you've got a pizza place where you can get slices two three slices of pizza if that's what you want there's also a burger place that does hot dogs chicken burgers beef burgers there's a veggie burger option there as well there's also ice cream sellers and things like that around the ship as well around the, the pool area as well entertainment is one area that i have to say i'm a little bit disappointed um i don't i don't remember the entertainment being this bad really on pno I uh, hate to be negative because I know that they're working really hard. Headliners was fine. I mean, there was two main shows. There was the astonishing show, the magic show, which I've seen a couple of times now. Uh, we were a couple of rows from the front on that one as well, so I could really see how it was done. But it's still a good show. If you've not seen that before, it's always worth going to see that. No complaints. And the show that they had on last night was one with shows from musicals from like some Matilda and Saturday Night Fever and all that kind of thing. So it was okay. Pretty average, you know. Um, so yeah, I was quite happy with the headline and stuff. Outside of that, I've got to be honest, I didn't think it was particularly good. The guest performers were okay. Um, the Vocal Extreme, I think, was one. Uh, they were okay, good. I only saw one of their shows, they had two shows on. Um, but generally speaking, around the ship, the entertainment wasn't great. Um, just the quality just isn't there. Now, they didn't have a sail away party at Southampton, which is something that P&O have not done for a while. Which I think is a little bit odd, really, because other lines do it, particularly Princess do it, I think, quite well. Um, but we did have a sail away party out of Lisbon. Oh, I've got to be honest, it was really poor. Um, the singer was the cruise director who seems a lovely bloke and he is quite funny, but he's not a singer. Um, I found it a bit uncomfortable and to be honest with you we only stayed for about five minutes um, and then we just went to the back of the ship and had a drink at the breakers bar at the back there. Um, it wasn't for me, it was very loud, it was a bit out of tune and for some reason they don't get the headliners dancers, the headliners performers to come out and do anything there, they're just the entertainment crew and they're not dancers, they really look like people that are at a wedding, sorry to be harsh on them, I'm sure they do a great job but it was just really poor, um, 
yeah, it's 2023, and I think Sail Away Party should be a lot better than that, or, to be honest, don't bother. In terms of the cabins, cabins look great. I've done a separate cabin tour video as well. Yeah, they're a little bit older, so you don't have any USB sockets or anything like that. And it just looks a little bit on the older side. The TV screen is quite small. But again, these things are minor, and they're all reflected in the price that you're paying. I mean, to come on to Ventura here is a fraction of the cost that you pay to go on some of the larger ships. So I don't think that's too bad a trade-off. Um, I got a lovely cabin on deck 10 with a big balcony. Um, so I'd recommend that one if you're able to get onto Canada deck. It's twice the size of the balconies on the other deck, so we didn't pay any extra for it. So that's really good. The shower room's fine. Uh, it's got a shower curtain, but there's no mould around the tiles or anything like that. So I think it's really well looked after. So okay, it's not the brightest and the newest, but it's still perfectly fine. I'd be more than happy to spend a week or a fortnight or any more in this cabin. It's great. In terms of service, yeah, the bar service, although not particularly slow, to be fair, it's a little bit standoffish a little bit you can't build up banter with the bar staff or anything like that you can with other ships i think that's just a culture thing uh, i've never really noticed that on p o that you can sort of strike up a sort of conversation with the bar staff they want to just get you your drink and get you out of there um which is fair enough that's their job um i like a little bit more interaction particularly when i go in royal caribbean they tend to use a lot of bar staff from the Caribbean and then they'll give you a little bit more banter back and suggest drinks and all that kind of thing. But if that doesn't bother you, that's fine. It's very functional, gets you the drinks. Cocktails are awful. Sorry, p and I have never gone on a P&O ship and had good cocktails. Um, everything's pre-mixed, they're just awful. So I've stuck to beers and wines, which are great, but please p and you really need to invest some time and money in your cocktails. They are dreadful. So in terms of the drinks package, we didn't get the drinks package on this trip. Um, I didn't particularly want to pay £42 a night. Less, of course, Peninsula Club discount, but even so, it would have just encouraged me to drink a bit more and I didn't really want to do that. So um, I think pound for pound I've done well. Um, I think I'm much better off having not taken the package, looking at my bill on the final day now. It might work for you. Uh, for me, it didn't. So one thing I was really impressed with on this ship was the internet connection. Um, I think it cost me about £120, less Peninsula Club discount, but the connection is absolutely superb. I'm getting 60, 70 meg connection, which when you consider you're right in the middle of the ocean is absolutely brilliant. So if you need to work from here, like my daughter's doing some work for her A-levels on here, plug the laptop in and away it goes. Absolutely perfect streaming videos, streaming whatever content you need to do. It's absolutely, it's a revelation. So from what I understand, they've recently put Starlink on. And I think that's the thing that's making the difference. Uh, even in the cabin here, we're still getting full five bars of signal and it just works absolutely perfectly. So yeah, absolute thumbs up for Starlink. That's the internet connection is absolutely brilliant. Okay, so finally in conclusion, I've really enjoyed my trip on P&O Ventura. To be honest, the weather has been awful. Uh, I've been cruising for 20 years and this is probably one of the roughest trips through the Bay of Biscay I've had, but that's of course not Ventura's fault and she's handled it really well. Um, I noticed last night there were not many people out and about. I think people were in their cabins sort of feeling a little bit worse for wear. Um, I think if this was your first cruise, you might be really put off, but um, rest assured, it, it, most of the time it's fine. Uh, we've just been a little bit unlucky. And even in the ports, we've been a little bit unlucky. Um, but I would definitely book this ship again. Uh, no complaints, it's it's a lovely, clean, functional ship. I say entertainment's a little bit of a, something that I think they should work on. Work on that, work on the cocktails, and maybe increase the portion size on the food, which I don't think is going to happen, but there you go, you can but, can but wish. Well, I hope you enjoyed that little short review of here on P&O's Ventura. And if you did enjoy it, then please do hit subscribe and also hit the like button. And we'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.